BJ from Hearns, and I'm going to be talking about this new Iwata compressor, the Smart Jet Plus. Now, great thing about this EU brush compressor is it's um, aimed towards the uh, uh, professional amateur, I would say. So it's got a very high-powered motor, which is connected onto a uh, tube-type tank. So the tank is actually part of the handle. So as you can see, pick it up. It's all very integrated. Great thing about having the um, uh, tank on it is the tank helps to hold a little bit of the um, uh, pressure. It also equalizes uh, the air that's flowing out of the airbrush. I won't say equalize because with a um, um, compressor motor like this, it'll pulsate the air. And as, a, as it does this, if you're using your airbrush for a long period of time, that pulsating will actually um, leave a little bit of residue about around the nozzle and it'll start blocking up. Now with this, because there's no pulsating, you get less of that problem when you're doing long um, airbrush um, sessions. Okay, so let's see what's in the box. So you've got the motor, which has got all the tank all incorporated. It comes with the uh, regulator with the gauge. So this also has the, uh, the built-in water trap and uh, dust filter inside. And this particular one's got a little casing around it. So unlike the full clear ones, it's a bit tougher and there's less chances of kicking it. So you've got that. You've got the hose, the very long hose. And then you've got uh, adapters which are included to suit American style airbrush threads. So you've got the Badger one, the Pash one, as the Aztec one. So that converts the, uh, the more standard type, uh, Iwata type 1 8 thread down to the tiny American style ones. Okay, and also there's the holder for an airbrush. So let's uh, put it together um, and we'll go through all its different features. So the first thing I'll do is um, I'll put on the uh, holder. So it's just a couple of screws, just need a, a Phillips head screwdriver. They just screw onto this plate. Now the plate's already been threaded, so you don't have to worry about ugly nuts on the bottom there or trying to hold them to tighten them up. So it's only two screws, just like that. It's really tight. Pop that down there. And then you've got the uh, the regulator with a little, little section here. So this just screws onto the outlet there. Now I want this fairly tight. So you want this more than just finger tight because you don't want it to, to leak like so. Okay, and then the hose goes on. So I just straighten this out. So this is a really long hose. So from the looks of it, I mean, that's one meter. It's two meters. So that's a three meter hose. So that's huge. So you can have this set up quite far away uh, from your work area. All right, so we just do the same sort of thing here. We'll screw this up to the regulator. Okay, so it's finger tight. All right, and we'll connect it onto one of our signature classic airbrushes. This is one of our most popular airbrushes. It's pretty good for all purpose use, 0.3 mil nozzle. All right, so I've got that finger tight there. Okay, so it's all screwed up. And this just sits in the holder like so. So it's very secure. Okay, so I'll just pack that all here over there. All right, let's just move this around so we can get a closer look at all the different features. Okay, so you get your uh, airbrush motor here. Okay, so it'll be feeding the uh, uh, the tube along these points here as well, and that's where it gets its feed from as well. So that's where it's getting it equalized. You've got your safety valve here, just in case there's any uh, problems with the motor. If the motor doesn't stop, for instance. Um, and instead of having the tube explode, you've got the safety valve here, so it releases all the air. But then over here, you've got your bleed valve. So the bleed valve is used, so usually when you're not using your um, compressor, you have this open. Now what this allows is any of the uh, uh, trapped uh, air that was inside the tube to escape. Now when you're using the compressor, it'll draw in cold air, and because it's warm, it'll heat up the air. Then the warm air touches the cold tube and it condenses all the water and the water collects inside. Now you don't want the water in there because even though you have a water trap, uh, it will still splatter and it can rust the inside of here too. So after every use, you always release that. So 
So this should be able to come off completely like so. And from there, if there's a lot of water, if it was a humid day, then you actually tip this over and, and you can pour it out. Okay, so we're just going to fire it up soon, so we'll get that all tightened up. Alright, so let's just screw it up. Alright, so you want it reasonably tight so it doesn't leak. Alright, so you got an on-off switch at this back point here. So I'll just switch it on. Like so. Now I can hear some leaky. Okay. Alright, so that's it there. Some more leaks. So this was just leaking out of the um, uh, manual release uh, valve here. So this is where you normally uh, pull it to release any uh, water that's trapped. So it's not going to do it now because there's too much pressure in there. I don't know, there you go. Okay, so you see how quickly that charged up the, uh, um, the tank and it's ready to go. So we've got this here, so to change the, um, the pressure, like uh, most regular um, regulators, you lift it up to take it out of a lock position and you turn it. So you turn it uh, clockwise for more pressure, you turn it anti-clockwise for less pressure. So at the moment that was where it was set. We'll just try this and we'll see. So you see at the moment we've got this open and it's pointing at 20. Okay, so this is operating at 20 psi at the moment. Now if I were to turn that down, you'll see you can see here how the pressure drops as you turn down. So this would be operating, so that's about 10 psi at the moment. So you can see how quickly the tank's just been recharged. So that's actually very low to use. We'll normally operate from 15 to 20 psi. So something like this. And then if you want more pressure, so we could pump it up there about here. That's 20 psi. And then we go up to, let's say that's a, a C, that's about 25 psi at the moment. So adjusting the pressure is as easy as that. And you can see how clear it, it shows it here. If you want to leave it at a particular point, just so we want to turn it back down to 20 psi, So, and then we're happy with that, you can press this down and it'll lock it into place. And that'll be always at 20 psi now, like so. So you can see you'll be spraying for a while and this is drawing all the air off the tank and then it automatically starts up. And you'll notice that the motor only comes on for a very short amount of time to, to charge it up. There you go. So this is all in all a very, very uh, high quality compressor, uh, really well suited for uh, long sessions on the airbrush. And um, there's another feature we've got here, which is, so there's the air intake on this side. So this is where it's sucking the air in. So there's a little filter in there, sucks it in, blows it out the size into the tube, and then it draws it back through here, out to your airbrush. And there it is, really nice piece of kit. It's really weighty. Uh, I don't know, it must be about, um, it's probably about three or so kilos. So when it's sitting on, even on a table, it's very steady. And you know, there's no chance of this, this airbrush getting knocked out either. So if you had these all laid out, if you like so, very easy to use. So there you go, that is the brand new uh, Iwata airbrush, great for uh, hobbyists that need to do a lot of work, or the same professional. Thank you.